what better way to start the next video series is start filming it the night before after you've been out with a, a few of Alpha fanatics after having rather a lot of cider and um, yeah you've got to drive in a few hours time of course I'll be totally sober by the time I get in the car and now I just need to find out where my hotel room is so uh, I'll join you in a few hours when I start my ride down to New Kids to pick up the next project so see you in a second Morning guys, hopefully you're all doing well. I am rather tired this morning. I started my journey yesterday at 4 a.m. to head over to Barnstable to uh, drop an engine off. And um, I went out with uh, Gary from Totally Alpha and Chris the Alpha Nut yesterday for a, um, a curry and a few beers. Uh, and we ended up in his uh, local and it just so happened to be folk music night and uh, that was a novel experience from somebody up north and um, yeah <laughs> it was very entertaining i will insert a few little snippets now for you but um yeah it's now what eight o'clock in the morning i've been up for an hour and a half now uh, rather tired and bleary eyed so i have my glasses on this morning so i can see the road ahead of me so the reason i am doing this video is i am now on my way to collect another car for the channel for me to um, get up and running again. The car in question has been sitting in a field for, wait for it, 15 years. It was parked up in 2010, driven from London to Newquay, which is where I'm heading to, and it's sat there for near as be 15 years now. It's a car I've always wanted, but never had. It's not a particularly great car, but it's one of those from my childhood. I've always been like, yeah, always wanted one of those, especially when I was uh, 1995, when I was 17. I hadn't long been driving. I drove down to Earl's Court for the motor show, which that doesn't Earl's Court even exist anymore, um, let alone the motor show. So, um, yeah, I drove down there looking at all the brilliant cars. I remember sitting in the 145, um, it would have been, um, wouldn't have been the, wouldn't even been a 156 then because they wouldn't have been out. It was literally the 145 was Alpha's range and the 146. Um, sitting in um, Vauxhall Tigra, um, what else was? Oh, it was the Punto. The uh, Punto hadn't long been out, so that was there as well. And um, there was a few others there, and, and within those cars was um, one I'd always wanted. So uh, I've got uh, 102 miles to go. So uh, I shall see you in a few seconds when um, hopefully I can find a place. It's certainly been tucked away, hasn't it? It's actually looking quite good, pretty-wise, isn't it? Yeah. I'm hoping, as it's been in the middle of a field, it's it's not too rusty underneath. But, uh, yeah. So here you are, guys. You can finally know it is a 1995 Vauxhall Calibra. It's nothing special. It's just one of those cars I always seen as a, as a teenager, late teens. And never owned one, but always liked the look of them. But by the time it come round to actually being able to afford one, I was no longer interested in them. I think I was more interested in the ladies. I'm sure you guys have the, your own little car in your history that you've always wanted to own but never have. So let me know in the comments down below. And we'll just continue having a look around this junk box. What you could do a full do up for it. I'm unsure yet. I'm gonna.
important. Oh, ho, 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 yes. Um, it's definitely had some things living under that. Oh, no. Okay. Somebody's left that off, so that means that's to the elements, but we can live with that. That's... Mine now has any moist got to it. What I can see initially, it doesn't look too bad. Sign, let's have it. Has it got oil in it? Yes, it's got oil in it. That's a good sign. Coolant, I would rather there be none in it than water. Oh, we've got blue coolant in there by the look of it. Go on, get back on. Yeah, you're not giving me a warranty on it. Oh, I'll leave that short. But yeah, it's. Uh, I reckon that battery's dead. Yeah. Oh, look at the size of the spider. That's just gone under the. Look at the way the cobweb's moving. It was that big. It was about the size of a rat. So I don't think I can salvage those tyres. I think they're a little bit past it. Man, it's probably going to be the phone that I can see underneath there. I can see some brown there. Most of it still looks blue. Don't know what's going on there. Not yet. I'll have to check this back on the video because I can't see anything. Totally flat tyres, it wasn't the easiest thing to move, let alone winch on by hand onto the trailer. But we, we got there in the end, as you can see by the time lapse, it took quite a while. He's also selling this which has been stood here one hell of a lot longer, as you can see. The suspension has come through the front of the car. It looks as though it's slightly bowed in the middle as well, but it's all complete. I mean, there's nothing there's nothing on that eye pillar there at all. Um, it's complete, so it's definitely worth some money in parts. Old J-Reg, so it's old. And I have also spotted another car right the way down here. That's where the uh, Calibra was. Let's see if we can see what it is. Try not fall over. Another Range Rover. I ain't getting in to look at that one, but um, I'll definitely say that that is too far gone. There's also a bit of a truck there as well. So that wasn't as hard to get it loaded as I thought it was going to be. The main issue for me was if those brakes were seized on. And uh, it's just very lucky I've got the appropriate car to be doing a bit of off-roading and a rat's just shot through there then. Whew, I can even hear. Yeah. This car isn't coming in the unit until it's had good clean. So Tom, if you're watching this, you're going to come down and valet this car because you're going to have a lovely time doing that. But it's all loaded now. I've now just got, what, 300 odd miles drive home. And, uh, yeah. Not home, in fact. I've got to go to the unit, unload it as well, so that's not going to be fun, but there you go. It is something. Oh, falling over. And now I'm going to get mud in the car. Oh, great. I have got some more trainers to put on, so I'm going to put those on. So there she is, a little bit wonky on the trailer. But she's on. She's in a very bad way. I think first thing I'm going to need to do is get four tyres for it. And, uh, yeah, that dented door. I wasn't expecting it to be that bad, but it happens apparently. And the inside is absolutely disgusting. But we'll get back home now and see what it's like another day. So, uh, see you later. So, I've just stopped at the services, had a little look underneath it. There are some areas which are a bit scabby. 
I fully expect some areas to need welding. Um, on some of the Facebook groups are saying, I oh, like the bulkhead and the front bit of the floor pan, which goes. Um, I've had the smallest of looks there from underneath, but put my camera underneath it. I'll put some videos in now. And it, it looks pretty good, to be honest. I've seen um, a lot worse that I've had to weld, especially on my Punto. So, uh, so far we are looking good. I've checked in the passenger seat as well. We've got the, the remainder of the uh, wing mirror. We've got the front towing eye cover and we have the side bit of trim. <clears throat> so other than tons of replacement parts, uh, the main bit I'm gonna need is gonna be another door. So if any of you Vauxhall people are watching and you've got a, a door, it'd be lovely if it's the same color, but if it's not, that's fine. And um, I'll come and grab that off you and fit a new door to it eventually. And um, fingers crossed, we can get this back to the unit now. Uh, unloaded outside, I'm not taking it in the unit, it's gonna get a good pressure wash off on the underside and in the engine bay, because there's uh, quite a few nasties gonna be hiding in that engine bay, let alone inside the car. So uh, I'm not gonna put that in the unit just yet. So um, join me in a second when it's back at the unit, we'll get it off the trailer. And then a few days later, we'll continue with the video and um, see what it's really like underneath. Hi there guys, it's now the following afternoon. I've done all my work for today now, so I can have an hour messing around with the Calibra. Um, what I have done is I've bought my little forklift outside, been a little bit naughty, and I've jacked up the rear end just so we can have a, a quick look at it without getting underneath it, of course, and see uh, how bad it is. So uh, I haven't had a look yet. So let's uh, see how bad it is. From the comments on the Facebook groups of on the Calibra groups, um, everybody's saying it's gonna be rotten at the bulkhead and the front floor pan. So let's have a look and see. Right, are you ready? The exhaust looks absolutely shot. By the time we do anything with that, that is gonna be falling apart. Um, one area which is going to want some welding is along the back of the boot floor. I think I can see holes forming along there, but that shouldn't be difficult to repair at all. The chassis at the back there looks fine. The fuel tank straps a bit crusty, but they don't look as though they're going to snap off at any point soon. That one looks a little bit worse than the others. It'll want rear shockers, it'll want rear brakes, it'll want tyres, it'll probably end up having springs as well. Rear subframe, rusty, but looks solid still. I'm sure some of you guys will see something that I've missed, uh, probably some rear arm bushes and brake pipes. But yeah, brake pipe there looks a bit dodgy and up in the corner there. Wouldn't surprise me if that has been leaking, but we'll find out when we go to put some pressure on the brakes. And again, that side of the brake pipe doesn't look too hot. Underneath the rear arch, we've got no holes. Actually, there's very little signs of rust there at all. A little bit coming through there on the back, but no holes. And now the driver's side rear. Again, there's no rust at all. The passenger front floor pan. There's definitely no holes. Brake pipes are shot all the way along, especially there. A little bit of rust there, but no hole. So all that floor pan looks okay. About the front bulkhead, um, can't see much of it at the minute, but no welding on the floor pan. A little bit of rust coming through. But there's definitely not, nothing that's gonna make any holes anyway. Front subframe doesn't look too great. So I'm sure that'll have to come off and, and be sandblasted and put back on. Now let's go and have a look at the other side. Ooh. Oh, I'll take it, that's a fuel pipe. They're gonna want changing. So I'm sure you guys can tell me if there's any um, aftermarket stuff out there. That's all the way along, they look pretty knackered. Right, front floor pan. There we go, a little bit of a hole there. Well, that's nothing, I'm sure. That could be fabricated back up again, but again, that isn't floor pan, that's like a jacking support. So I've got some big thick metal in there and I can clean that up, weld that up, and that should be okay. It's Oh, 
and they'll hold it. I might give you a bit of a hole if when I grind that down. Again, nothing on the front. Again, nothing really on the front end there. So I think we can call that, as I thought it would be, it is actually pretty good. Now my theory behind it not being rusty is purely for the fact, yes, it was on a field, yes, it sat for 15 years, but it was in the middle of the field where underneath it, the grass can only grow so high because it's got no light. It's never gonna get wet. It's got air circulating all the way around it. So at some points, if not most of the time, it's actually gonna be dry underneath there. Now, what would have made a big difference would have been if it had been against a wall or against some bushes where the sunlight can't get to it and it would never dry out and then it would have been absolutely rotten, I reckon. But because I could see in the pictures it was sitting in the middle of a field and I knew it hadn't moved, is that I think it was going to be all right. And I think we've done all right. From what people have said, it was going to be a lot worse. So let's jack up the front end now and see if you can see inside the arches. I expect there to be some rust there because that was the put of the point pointing downhill and um, that's sort of the last point where it would have dried so let's see if there's anything under the earth there so let's see how bad it is well that's where the steering rack comes through there and there's no uh, rust at all admittedly yes i do need to check behind the wheel arch liners a little bit of rust there but no hole front suspension do you know what? It's not that bad. It's it's not rusted away. Yes, it's got surface rust. Yeah, the brake pipes and hoses are shot. I mean, I think that is a major bit of swelling going on there. If we get it to focus. So yeah, that's a major bit of swelling going on there. So that needs changing, but the, all the brake pipes are going to want changing anyway. Whew. Right, final corner. Again, brake pipes shot, and I mean absolutely shot. Is that going to be a hole there? Oh yeah, I think it is. A little tiny hole, I think. There's no, ah uh, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna want the smallest bit of welding there. Um, but I am gonna open the bonnet in a minute and see what the rest of it's like. But we'll check underneath first. Again, all up there, okay. Right. Underneath then, front subframe. Can't see any holes. Looks okay. Sump's rusty. I wonder if that'll last. The oil filter, I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge to get off. CV boots look okay. The auxiliary belt, I can't see any cracks on it. That is really really good because this is sat for 15 years in a frigging field and it, it is still you know would it pass an mot no it wouldn't but generally it's just like stuff you'd expect to change needs doing i am dreading getting that oil filter off but not too bad so guys you were all moaning on this 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 calibre forum saying oh it's going to be rotten at the front end but no i think it's all right yeah i've got to remove the arch liners and Christ, if there's no rust anywhere else, then there's probably not going to be none underneath there either. So let's pop the bonnet and have a good play around under there. Locks are a bit stiff. Ooh, yeah, this is the place. This is the place I really don't want to be. smells of mold damp and a little bit of rat piss so yeah not looking forward to cleaning that out uh, right let's try and get this bonnet open i need two hands for that okay right it can't all be bad that has had something on living on it there's been all stuff living in there the one concern i spotted yesterday is why had this been removed and i also spotted on the back seat a can of easy start. So, was this parked up because it had got an engine issue? Or was it parked up just because he didn't use it anymore? Uh, we'll never find, well, 
we'll we will find out when we start replacing some parts on it so we're going to want hopefully the leads are going to be good we're going to want some spark plugs we're going to want an oil filter we're going to want a cam belt we're going to want an auxiliary belt air filter and um, fuel filter if there is one so i mean overall it's not that bad i do need some bonnet lining so if you have one of those anybody out there let me know and we'll have one of those off you because that is uh, gross i doubt very much this battery is going to charge up is there a date on it not that i can see right a bit of wiring loom check over i don't want to go down there too much because there's going to be some huge spiders in there um that looks all okay it's gonna be bits where they can put it's gonna be bits where they can sort of sit and stay i mean there's all crap down here something's been living in there at some point um all okay behind there little bit of chew damage here you can see little teeth marks in it focus on it and you won't focus on it but from <laughs> all the wires are okay luckily i am going to want to check all behind there um all the brake pipes look easy to get to let's have a look in the fuse box <laughs> a massive fuse box just for one fuse that's okay we've got a little spider living in there look but we're gonna get the pressure washer on you in a minute mate and um hopefully uh, you find a new home so we're gonna need dizzy cap and arm without a doubt see if i can get it off because those screws look a little bit rotten we're gonna need some hoses we're gonna need some spark plugs we might want ht leads we're gonna want an air filter oil oil filter coolant brake fluid peristeering fluid just basically give it a massive service cam belt as well don't have a clue where to do one but as it's an eight valve it shouldn't be that bad um what's living down there nothing hopefully so i'm gonna get the pressure washer out now and clean it up a little bit because i want to be able to get get down there and uh, have a mess so let's get some cleaning done almost forgot we need to check for the fluids um power steering fluid Ooh, that's empty okay so i bet we're gonna need a power steering pipe somewhere brake fluid i did check coolant yesterday all i want to know is the brake fluid there yeah we've got brake fluid in there and it actually looks quite clean still look at that look so we've got no brake pipe leaking then which is good and the coolant we saw yesterday is still there and it does have some blue coolant in it. I mean, we've still got to go over the interior, but I want to get that engine bay clean first because I know the interior is going to be horrible. Now, I mean, if I was Matt Armstrong or Chris Six or something like that, I'd be getting out the ice blaster now, spending thousands of pounds on for it to just look clean. I mean, that's a waste of money. Given it the quickest of going over it didn't appear to be too bad on the exterior um, that has cleaned up okay the engine bay is 100 times better so i'll give you a look 
So before I try and put a battery on it, I am going to let it dry out overnight because I have been a bit uh, enthusiastic with the pressure washer to get rid of all of those spiders. And I've still left some cobwebs down there, how dare I. But now you can see a lot better and it's all there. Everything is still reasonably clean. And there's no extra damage that I've noticed under the bonnet. I have removed all the um, sound deadening from in here. I think that's the reason why none of the engine loom has really been chewed because they've had everything behind that little bit of uh, material, all that uh, sound deadening, has just been chewed and made into loads of different nests under the bonnet. So uh, there was plenty of uh, poo and um, dead things to scoot out the way. So they've all gone now and um, it just leaves the interior now. So, interior. It's a shame we can't have smell vision because you would stink a whole lot of that down there. So the interior is going to have to come out to be cleaned. Uh, and it probably needs more than clean, it's going to probably want recolouring. That driver's seat is in nasty shape and there's a little bit of a hole up there. Headlining has all fell down. I have no idea if the sunroof works. I don't think the heated screen is going to work because I can see the element there. Is the element fell off the back? Um, dashboard, gear gate, surround is a little bit damaged. I don't want to touch too much in there. Uh, in the glove box we have an MOT. March 2nd, 2010, and that was when it expired. Uh, it's a bulb in there, dashboard is all riffy, steering wheel's riffy. Oh, we do have heated seats. We've got the oil pressure gauge and battery voltage, a period correct Sony cassette player. I think that's the trip computer up there and clock and a few uh, manual dials. Now we haven't driven a car with manual dials in a long time. I think I've been spoiling myself. Uh, right, let's uh, have a little look in the back. Ooh. Again, cobwebs, mold, a football tournament from 2009. So I'll just say that's when the car was last used, probably. Uh, got some easy start in the back. And what's that over there? Let's go around the other side and have a look. Okay, somebody was having some issues because they've printed off this manual. Don't even know if it's with this car, to be honest. We'll keep hold of that just in case. Um, yeah, door card will clean up okay. Um, there's a radiator cap in there, but that's not off this car. But yeah, the seat's got a hole in it, unfortunately, there. I wonder if that can be repaired. I'm sure it can. Um, and yes, the car has covered only 84,198 miles. So as it's only covered a small amount of miles, I am thinking, fingers crossed, this shouldn't be too bad to get running again. Uh, but that is not for today. So what do you guys think I should do to this car? In all honesty, I don't think I should fully restore it because I don't have four years to put into it and probably £40,000 to restore it to what I'd like it to be. So that's not gonna happen. So what I'm probably gonna do is restore it to an MOT standard, get it all running right and looking a little bit better, then I'm probably gonna give one of you guys the opportunity to buy it off me and continue with any of the restoration work that I need to do. But, but it's a car I've always wanted. I've told myself and I've told the wife and I've told a few friends that I'm not gonna fall in love with it. I'm just gonna repair it to a reasonable standard, MOT it, enjoy it for a week, drive around in it, film the final video in it, and then um, you can go to a new owner and I can move on to another project, which would probably be another car I've always wanted to own. So uh, fingers crossed I can work my way up to a 205 GTI. So that is it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you are new here, here's a quick hello from me. Oh, one more thing. We haven't looked in the boot, have we? It's locked. Oh, 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 we have got a Sony laptop dock, but judging by the size of it, it's a Sony Vio, and um, it's got an S-Video output on it, so I'd say this is from 2010, or somewhere around that. Uh, warning triangle, 
that bulb holder down there. Let's have a look at the boot floor. Hey, look at that look. That looks pretty good. 